I'm Mukul Devachand, and in this edition of The Report, I'll ask if a cap on housing benefit will really drive the poorest people out of London and other big cities. In this age of austerity, one measure stands out. The cap on housing benefit has polarised the nation and divided even political friends. We will not accept any kind of Kosovo-style social cleansing of London. If they think that's fair, they should say to taxpayers, we think it's fair to charge you who are working hard more to give people housing that you couldn't afford if you were in work. I give way to my... One and a half million British people who haven't been given council houses live instead in private homes by getting all or part of their rent paid by the state. I live in a five-bedroom house and I've got six children. I live on a very low income. so That means without the housing benefit, I cannot pay the rent. For the report this week, we've been investigating how impending cuts to this local housing allowance across England, Scotland and Wales will really play out in the lives of Londoners, in the city where the cut will bite first. So we're just coming up the stairs, um, and there's a door here, so what what room is this? That's the bedroom. Okay. That's my bedroom. Okay. What what bedroom for you? And this is the girls' bedroom here. Okay, so the girls share a room? Yes, they do. So And they're three and two years old? Yes. And where would you say that we are in London? I say it's a very sort of like central area, a very popular area, which I suppose everyone would like to live in. You know, it's got the postcode and, you know, arty farty. (laughs) Around here, arty farty postcode is probably an understatement. Mary's two bedroom place in a converted period house is just a few streets away from the millionaire's row of Maida Vale. The story begins here, within the City of Westminster Authority, where many well-heeled and white-collared Londoners can't afford the sky-high rents, but where Mary lives on housing benefit. My rent is £1,451.67 per month, and I pay £20 per month towards that. I can see it's not an enormous place, nice place, Mm -hmm. but in a very fashionable central London area. Why do you feel that you need to live here? Well, my family live here, and all my friends live here as well. And I've lived in this area all my life. On the other hand, £1,451 and 67 pence pence per month is a very high rent. Couldn't you live somewhere else? I could live somewhere else, but if I were to live somewhere else, I'd be faced with the same situation because I have to look at childcare costs. I rely on my family very heavily. Mary's family have called this central area home since her parents arrived in the 1960s to work in London from the West Indies. She gets her rent paid now because, like three quarters of recipients, she's on out-of-work benefits. She's a single mum on income support, and many others are pensioners or the long-term sick or disabled. Mary's mum watches her granddaughters while Mary searches for a job. But the upmarket rent means Mary will be affected by the very first measure the government's bringing in, a cap on all payment levels, coming in from April next year. If it's going to be £295 per week for a two-bedroom property, and compared to what my rent is, £335 per week, I would have to make up the difference of £45 per week. So in total, that's £180 per month I would have to pay out of my own money to make up my rent. Maybe more, because actually it's not just the cap. Six months after that, there'll be a, a lowering of all rents available on housing benefit as well. Right. Were you aware of that? I was not aware of that. No, this is news to me. OK, I can see alarm <laughs> spreading on your face, actually. <laughs> well, you do stand to be worse off after this. What are you going to do? I have no idea what I'm going to do. Obviously, if I can't meet to pay the full amount of rent... The worst scenario that can happen is that my landlord will say, I've got to give you notice because you're in arrears of your rent. And, you know, it is fair enough for her to do that because she has a mortgage to pay. And I totally understand that. I have seen that happen to my friends. A lot of them have said it's very expensive to live in this area. They've actually moved out of the area. I mean, that's happening because of market forces, isn't mm. it? Because these areas are becoming more expensive. And it's the housing benefit that's stopping market forces hit you. Maybe you could go and join those, your friends in those areas. I mean, what would you feel about that? I suppose you could say that 
maybe I'm too set in my own ways to actually do that. It's okay for them, but for me, I know what my needs are and I know what I want. So for me, I would like to stay within this area. I don't see why I should have to move out. Just left Mary's place. And I can see why the rent is so high. I mean, this is Maida Vale, central London. A young professional couple, say, would love to pay plenty of money to have this address. And yet, I look at the shop fronts as I leave the area, and then there's Caribbean grocers, a Lebanese halal butchers, boxing club. These are clues that there's an older working-class community, West Indian, Irish, Arab, people who came in here when these houses were much cheaper and who are using housing benefit now, like Mary, just as a means of hanging on in this area. These are some of the most expensive places in the whole world. Lord Freud is the Conservative Minister for Welfare Reform in the coalition government. As Sir David Freud, he was previously an advisor on welfare to the Labour government. It is ludicrous for the taxpayer to have to subsidise people to stay in places which they themselves couldn't dream of affording and which are more expensive than virtually any other place outside Hong Kong. So you acknowledge then that quite a lot of people will have to move? We're expecting that a lot of the impact of this will be taken by the landlords. You're saying, in a sense, that you can have your cake and eat it, that people won't have to move because actually now that you're reducing the benefit, landlords will just put their rents down. Yes, we're expecting a large amount of the adjustment to be taken in rents. And the reason for that is that we are 40% of the market. And when the terms of trade change for 40% of the market, clearly the other side has got to make an adjustment. My name is Dan. I'm a landlord in Westminster. I own several properties in the borough. Most of them are based around here, which is in prime sort of Westminster area. And I have to say, it's a pretty stunning location. I mean, Parliament's just literally down the road. Literally, yes. And this is really prime SW1 postcode central London, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And funny enough, the block that we're outside it was designed by Lutchins in the 1920s. I mean, perfect for an MP. Perfect for an MP's second home, but you're not renting to MPs, are you? You're not renting to people on housing benefit. That's correct, yes. In a way, Dan's business model illustrates the government's point. He gets £25,000 a year from each of his five one- and two-bedroom flats, more than they're probably worth, because of what he freely admits is an anomaly in the system. What kind of people are renting from you here? Each single mothers. Uh, And how much do you get at the moment for each of these flats? I get the maximum LHA rate, local housing allowance rate, which is £500 a week. Quite a lot of money. I agree. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's why I'm here. What's happening is... The government is assessing how much will be paid to recipients of a private housing benefit in an area. In this area, I mean, we're right in the centre of London, so the rate they set is quite high. Of course. They did stupidly what they did. They took a broad market area of rents, they call it, the RMA, and they did an average. You just do your maths. I mean, if you put these two blocks together and worked out an average of rent, you've got one that's very, very expensive and one that's not so expensive, you're going to end up with a higher average rent. So right. they're just not very clever. And anyone who's had half a brain could actually go to an estate agent and say, what's the rental rate in this block? Now that the caps are going to come in, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue? Are you going to just put the rent down a bit? No, I'm going to either sell my flats because the business doesn't make sense anymore or let to tenants in the private sector who are going to be paying a higher rate than the government cap. So despite the years of profits from the state, it doesn't make commercial sense for Dan to now accept the government's new capped rate of rent. He used to get £500 a week. Now he'd get a little bit more than half of that. The reduction is so great that it's single mums out and private tenants who can pay £350 a week in. And the terrible thing is that, of course, the girl just over there, she's got a son who's six and is very happy in the local primary school. What's going to happen? Have you had this conversation with no, her? Have you told her? No, no. I don't even think she knows what's happening in terms of LHA cuts and everything else. If the government perhaps had consulted a little better or a little more effectively, then this situation may not happen. The government have just said to, effectively to me, we don't want you and your five properties anymore, go away. And that's where I'm going. Let someone else take, take over. Dan's getting out of the benefits game in desirable Westminster. In other, less salubrious parts of town, the effect will be less pronounced for now. But from October next year, the rent the government's prepared to pay all over the country will be reset to a cheaper rate. 
That will mean people purely on housing benefit will have access to 40% less of the housing stock in an area than they currently do. And for the two years after 2013, the benefit will only rise with inflation, which historically tends to rise much more slowly than actual rents do. It's all meant to rein in spiralling costs. But the critics say this second cut means the squeeze we see in central London today will be seen in other British cities tomorrow, that people on benefits will be priced out altogether, leading to more stories like this man's. My name's Terry Lane. I'm 49 years of age. I work for an architect's company. I'm a document controller and printer. I earn £18,700 per annum. Terry Lane is one of the people on local housing allowance who have a job but don't earn much. 26% of people getting the benefit are actually working. And the working poor already account for 40% of recipients in areas of outer London, like Barnet Borough, where he now lives. Terry has already been edged out from where he started off. He was born to Irish parents in the same central area as single mum Mary, in what was then a slum. He grew up in a council house but today he pays £800 a month from his own pocket and gets £200 in top-ups from benefits for a compact two-bedroom flat. It's home to himself, his wife and student son in Hendon, seven miles away from work, a journey he often walks or cycles to save money. It is tight. It's a constant worry, to be perfectly honest, because all I'm thinking about is rent. And to be put in a position like this and not having security of your own home, for example, and being in the private sector and relying on housing benefit to top up your life, so to speak, is rather daunting. But cuts do have to be made, don't they? And and we're all facing difficult choices. And lots of people live quite far out of London and have to bear that. So, you know, is it fair for you to, to be upset about this? I'm not asking for anybody to say, oh, I feel sorry for whatever. Housing benefit, I need... Otherwise, I don't have anywhere to live. I can't afford to live anywhere else. If they want me to live in Manchester, how am I supposed to get to work? Maybe it could be time for us as a society to accept that some people can't live in London. They can't live in the centres of our cities. The poor have always lived in London and the rich have always lived in London. They've lived side by side for centuries. You take away that element of London, you take away a city that will have no heart. We need poor people to do the dirty work for Londoners. I don't want all the poor workers to be shifted out into the outer boroughs. We built London, the poor people. Remember that. When the cut in rent comes in from October, Terry's benefits will actually only go down a small amount, probably around £25 a month. But it could be enough, he says, to edge his London working-class family finally out of the city for good. And in East London, in a neighbourhood that symbolises London's diversity and tolerance, I learned that it's not just individuals who are concerned that this could happen. Here, a whole community says it will be affected by the cut. Hello, everybody. Don't stand up. Say good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Stanford Hill. Are you in the senior It's a part yet? of Hackney. This is the largest Haredi Jewish community in Europe, lives in this section of London. What yomtiv is coming? What yomtiv? Are you looking forward to Hanukkah? Yeah. Yeah. Rabbi Abraham Pinter runs five local schools here in Stamford Hill. His untrimmed grey beard, black coat and hat are outward signs that he's not just Jewish, but Haredi, devout and ultra-Orthodox. His ever-present smile is a sign of how proud he is of his tight-knit community. In fact, we have a whole infrastructure here. We have our kosher shops, even the kosher fish shops. I love this area, but to be very honest, I don't have a choice. I have to live in this area because this is the only area where I would have the infrastructure which I need, where I can practice my religion and where my extended family lives. I was born here and I've got my grandchildren here. How many grandchildren do you have of interest? 28. Large families on relatively low incomes in a hackney which is becoming an increasingly expensive part of the world. 
it all means that East London's ultra-Orthodox Jewish communities are likely to lose out, as housing benefit is capped and then cut.